Hi, I'm Rick Stivers, and I'd like to take a moment to uh, try to explain the operations of the T90 transmission. I've created a cutaway of the T90 transmission so you can see how the internals of the transmission operate. We're going to start off talking about the main gear going into the transmission, also known as the input shaft. It consists of an assembly of several parts that would be the main gear the front bearing, the bearing retainer, the front bearing snap ring, and the oil slinger. Note that the main gear itself consists of several parts. The main shaft, the splines on this slide into the um, clutch. The pilot bushing riding surface here, your front main bearing, the bevel cut gear, or helical cut, and the chevrons, and this surface right here is where the third gear synchronizer rides. When the main gear is installed inside the transmission, it now fits through the front of the case, and then you can see that helical cut gear here. It now intersects with the cluster gear here. Those two will be installed in the transmission. They will intersect and mesh like this. You can't see it very well inside the transmission though because of the oil collector which is installed inside the case. It fits in like this. Let's take a moment now to discuss the cluster gear itself. The center core of the cluster gear is where the needle bearings ride along with the counter shaft. Okay, it fits through locking it into place with all the needle bearings packed inside. In the instruction video, I will show you exactly how to install those. Let's talk about what the cluster gear itself is. This gear is driven by the main gear. This gear is for second gear. This gear assembly is for first gear. And this gear assembly is for reverse gear. Now with the main gear and the cluster gear installed in the transmission, they will mesh up to the main shaft. This is a dismantled main shaft. This area here is where the needle bearings will ride inside the main gear. This part right here is where the clutch hub will ride for shifting into second and third gear. This assembly right here is where the first reverse slide gear ride and this area back here is where your output shaft gear will ride along with your rear bearing. Here we have a mostly assembled main shaft assembly. At the front you will see the clutch sleeve that slides over top of the clutch hub but even forward of that you will see the synchronizer blocking ring. The synchronizer blocking ring fits onto that main gear that we talked about earlier like this like this okay the clutch sleeve is what locks that synchronizer plate to the main gear and to the second gear but let's go ahead and slide this off and see how this is accomplished if you look at the clutch hub itself it is splined heavily with the clutch sleeve but it's also splined internally here. The second gear synchronizer, this is one of the high prone failure areas inside the T90 transmission, fits onto the second gear. So what locks the second gear to this shaft is starting off with these chevrons, okay? Then the synchronizer plate, then the clutch, hus, clutch sleeve, which would then be attached via all those splines to the clutch hub. Once all that's locked together, now we have it locked into second gear so that it can't come out. As soon as this comes undone, second gear is now free to spin has no effect on the main shaft at all.
Okay, let's take a moment now to look at the T90 transmission actually in operation. What you'll see is your main gear is rotating now. Your front synchronizer is not. Your cluster gear is rotating, which it has to rotate all the time. Your second gear is rotating, but it will rotate either independent of the main shaft, as we saw a while ago, or locked together with it, depending on whether or not it's in gear. And the first reverse gear, which is going to sit here perfectly still right now because we're not in first reverse and we don't have either third or second gear activated. So now let's take a moment and move it into reverse gear. Okay, we're in reverse gear. Notice now that the counter shaft is rotating. It's rotating in the opposite direction that the main gear is. This is our reverse. We're locked in here. Second gear is free spinning on the shaft because there's nothing locking it together here. And third gear is not doing anything either, but notice that these two shafts are operating independent of each other. Now we're in first gear. Notice that this shaft and this shaft are operating together. Notice though that the main gear is turning much faster than the main shaft is. That's because we've got the gear reduction of this cluster gear coming through and operating right here. Notice though that the main gear and the main shaft are spinning at two different speeds. What we have is the gear reduction of going from the main gear to the cluster gear back over to the first gear to the main shaft. Then remember, first reverse gear is locked to the main shaft. Now we're going to go from first gear to second gear. So first gear has got to come out as the shifter lever moves. Notice that the main shaft stops rotating now. We move over and we go into second gear. This locks it together. The second gear is now locked to this gear, which in turn is locked to this gear all the way through, so we now have a constant flow. However, notice that the main gear and the main shaft are still not rotating at the same speed. Now we're going to go to third gear. What's going to happen is the shift fork is going to move the clutch sleeve forward through past the synchronizer onto the third speed gear. Okay, notice now that everything in here on this main shaft line is turning at the same speed. We have a positive lock all the way from the front of the main gear, which is attached to the clutch, all the way out and into the transfer case.